Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. Hi, I'm Jennifer Gianni. Cass is here with me once more, and we're adding on to our leg float video, looking at stability in the pelvis and the lumbar spine, and really throughout the whole spine, that someone, especially with the floor, can really have that feedback and, and come to a real knowing of the verbal cue of keep all your primary curves anchored. Um, that can be a really intellectual thing for a lot of people. Oh yeah, I know my back of my head, my mid back, and my sacrum. But if they're truly and honestly doing that, that's another story. So we talked in our last video about really giving the support of the floor to your client, which means that a lot of times we have to prop it with a few more things, right? Because we are a very curvy uh, being, our body is very curvy, the floor is very flat, so we need to, to give um, our body some support. So we talked about we had casts with the incline pillow, which is great because it gives her that slight incline, and especially for clients who um, constantly splay their ribs, they have a big extension in their thoracic spine, then the incline pillow, which supports the back of the head and the upper back, it helps that mid-back thoracic spine to find the floor. And with that anchor, then your client can really find the elongation of their pelvis, right? Their natural lumbar curve and the sacrum can find the mat. Now, Cass did a great job at showing us what a beginner client's pelvis would do as they did a diagnostic leg float. So, talked about the propping, that can be number one that can help. And then you can start to turn up the volume on different important structures in their body, right? You can start to cue the transverse abdominis, that's what we're gonna do now. But I wanna say that I'm not, when I'm cueing the transverse abdominis, I'm not saying that this is the only structure in the body that has to be working. I'm far from saying that. But when you have a client who doesn't know anything about their deep system or how to stabilize, you have to turn up the volume in certain areas. You have to highlight certain areas so that they start to layer their learning. And this is exactly what we're doing here. So once I've gotten her into a neutral, then I'm gonna go to the ASIS bones and I could do something as simple for my client as the fingertip abdominals, right? We looked at this lower transverse muscle in a couple of videos ago. Um, you could do a light touch, which is what we're kind of used to doing in the Pilates world, or if you are so brave, you could go a little bit deeper through the external obliques, through the internal obliques to the transverse abdominis, pull across, keep the pelvis still, keep the spine still, and then ask your client on the exhale while you're, sh while you're still pulling it apart to try to bring your thumbs together towards the midline. So we'll have Cass do that. Very good. Now, if you are not into touching the client or the client does not feel comfortable being touched, you could use, this is one um, tool that I've gotten from Marie Jose and I use it all the time. So you can take a Mikasa ball and put it into their upper inner thighs, not between their knees, but their inner thighs. And then you ask for a neutral. And this exercise is really connecting the upper inner thighs into the pelvic floor, right? So that she's using this tractioning of her upper inner thighs to get a little bit of feedback from her pelvic floor and in turn, right? Pelvic floor transverse abdominis, married couple. In turn, that transverse abdominis will react. So Cass is going to take a deep inhale. And then on the exhale, she's going to start to think about that deep bikini line abdominal. While she's doing that, I'm pulling the ball towards her knees. 
and then we can relax. So it gives this contrast between the inner thighs, me pulling the inner thighs in one direction and she's pulling in the other direction to give a little bit more feedback into the pelvic floor and the transverse abdominis. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.